Hey guys, this is Jake Griggs of Griggs Sculpting. I'm so glad you're back. This is part three of our mold making series. This is where the rubber meets the road. This, no pun intended, this is the fun part. This is where you're going to recreate your process. You're going to recreate your artwork and you're not going to pay someone else to do it. And I'm going to show you step by step what I do, who I use, what products I use. You're going to learn how to do it. There's a million different ways, and I'm sure there's a lot of mold makers out there saying, hey, you're doing it wrong, do it my way. This is how I do it, um, and I make all my own molds. I'm getting better. Some of my molds in the past weren't so good, um, but I'm learning just like everybody else. And so I, I, I want you guys to stick with me, um, and I'm going to take you through the process. And from this point out, once, once you've got your mold made, you've got it your shims put up and everything kind of taken care of. This part really is pretty easy. Um, it's not that difficult to put rubber on something, but there's some tricks out there. There's some issues you can do wrong. And before we start, I'm gonna show you who and what I use, what products I use, because everyone's always asking, well, who do you use? What do you use? There's, you know, molding companies and uh, silicone rubber companies. There's, there are a dime a dozen. You can find them anywhere. Um, I use a particular company called GT Products. Um, I've used them ever since I've been mold making. Uh, a foundry owner actually suggested it to me. Um, they're out of Grapevine, and uh, they sell all over the world. Um, most of the foundries, especially in Texas area, and all over America and all over the world, they use GT Products. They're not like a um, they're not like some Amazon store that you just, they're, they're a professional company. They make their own professional mix. Um, and these are some of the products. These are what I use. So I, I use a, uh, a particular brand. This is called Silicone Rubber Base GT5092. Um, this particular, it's a tin cure. All the technical information, I'll put all the information of what I use in the description below. I'll put a link to their company. I'll even put my rep on there so you can talk to him. Um, this right here, and everyone, and everybody, you know, they always want to go chinchy and they want to find some cheap way to make molds. If you if you go and find some guy, you can do it. You can go on YouTube and you can find some dude on there that you know, where you take soap and silicone and you mix it, you can make some crappy, if you use crappy products, you're gonna get a crappy mold. I learned that the hard way. You're gonna have to learn to spend money. This, this is about $90 uh, for this bucket here. It's about $90, you, um, and, it's, and it's very high quality, good product. I've used it, never had any problems with it. Um, the company that I use, uh, my rep, he is an awesome dude, helpful. Um, he's just always, and they're prompt, they're there, and, and for me, they're local. And it also comes with a, uh, called a silicone curing agent. And the curing agent is, is a one to 10 ratio. This is how um, it actually cures by adding this, it's called a catalyst. And I'm gonna take you through that process here in a minute on how we mix it, the process, but, um, you're also going to need some brushes. Guess what? You're going to need a brush, multiple brushes for every single coat. And what we're going to be doing is what they call a brush on mold. That means we're going to put multiple, multiple layers on our sculpture until it builds up a thick, heavy duty shell. And I'm going to show you. Um, also, we're going to use a product called Fixotropic. It's a thickening agent, and I also bought buy this from GT Products. Later, we're going to want a thick, a thick rubber shell on this, and this is going to thicken up our rubber like icing, so we can fill in the undercuts. And these, this is who I use. All these materials that I use, you can use who you want. Um, this is who I use. I've never had any problem with their rubber. Um, their product's pretty cool. It's a pretty good product. And so all that will be in the description below. And I realize you probably want to fast forward all this and get straight to the, you know, to the chase of things. Don't skip the video. Learn. I'm going to go through this step by step. If you miss some of these steps, you're going to waste money, you're going to waste the mold, and you're probably going to be pissed off because it's not going to work out for you. 
So slow down, take your time, and watch the video. Um, and we're going to go through this process. One more thing, you, and I'm going to repeat it. You get what you pay for when it comes to molding material, especially silicone rubber, resin. We'll go into resin later in our casting. And, you know, I use uh, GT products for resin also. Um, you get what you pay for. If you're saying, man, that's just too expensive, if you can take your sculpture and you can use a good molding material and you can replicate it 100, 150 times and, and make money on every one of those sales, it's worth spending $100. I think, I think all of this right here is like $115 something dollars or something like that. You'd have to go on their store exactly. Um, but with that said, you get what you pay for, spend the money, get it done, and, and you'll have a good product. And I'm going to show you how to work this product. Hey guys, okay, we're back. We're fixing to mix our silicone. We're fixing to mix our catalyst, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. When you're going to apply your first coat of silicone, you don't want to fill this bucket completely full and go nuts. If you don't get everything covered the first coat, it's not going to kill anything. You can always go back and add more. Um, so, but you want to do a good general amount. The fir your first coat's going to be really, really drippy, and it's going to run down to the bottom, and we're going to have to scoop it up, put it back on top. Um, but you don't want to go crazy uh, the first coat. So we're going to go ahead and pour this real quick. If you'll come over here and look, and what we're going to do, I have a, a scale here. What I'm going to do is I take this bucket, I put it on there, it's going to measure something. You can zero it out. I think it's zeroed out. It's actually getting the bag, but it's okay. So we zeroed it out, we're pouring our, our silicone rubber. All right, we're going to do a pretty good generous amount. It's going to be a thin coat. Let it drip. Get all that on there. Wear rubber gloves. This stuff's a pain in the butt when it gets all over your hands. Okay, so I've got a ounces, and you're going to use your... Uh, this is like a cooking uh, scale. And so it says 14.85. Uh, that would be for our rubber because we've already zeroed out. So you take 14.85... Okay, it's going to be a 10 to 1 ratio. So you take 1485, the, the amount of rubber you use, and you divide it by 10. And so I'll take my calculator, and I'll do 1485 divided by 10. That gives us 1.485. So that's how much of our curing agent I'm going to put into uh, the silicone. Uh, to get a good even uh, mixture. If you do it wrong, it'll cure way, way fast or won't cure at all. So remember, it's a one to 10, okay? You take the, the weight of your silicone divided by the curing agent, the catalyst. And so I'm gonna open this up. I like to use, I like to use these little stir sticks. Sometimes I'll double them up like this. They're just real handy because you can throw them away. And I'll go ahead and what we'll do is we'll add, we've got 1485, we'll add, we'll add our divided number which was 1.48, so we'll go plus 14.85 or 0.85. So we're going to put in a, about 16 point something in there. You don't have to be perfect on this. Trust me. Sometimes I get tired of doing it after doing molds all day, and I'll just eyeball it. But So we're just going to go ahead and add to it, and we're just going to get pretty close. And you'll see, we just keep pouring, and that's about close. That's about, and I always just add just a tiny bit extra on top. It's better that it cures a little quick than not cure at all. And so what you want to do is you want to mix this real good. You've got, after pouring this, You've got about, really, you've got about 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes uh, before you start getting in a bind. Uh, and you, you'll, 
you'll get it cured too quick before you finish your product, your project. So you mix, 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 mix. You don't want to, you're not in a rush here. So you want to take your time to mix. Don't uh, get lazy on your mixing or you'll ruin your sculpture. So here I am, I'm mixing, look at this color. <clears throat> on the next, on the next uh, coat, we're actually going to use, this is actually a dye. You can get this on the internet, um, and it's just a blue dye that we'll add to distinguish the colors from different coats. So we'll go yellow, blue, yellow, blue, all the way up to our next coat. So we mix, 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 and we're just going to slowly, if you come over here and look at, um, if, you, if you look at uh, Goliath here, you'll notice I use eggs. These are Easter eggs, little mini Easter eggs. And I use these for keys that the, the silicone will be able to stick through because later we're going to need something to be able to put it back together. And, it, and I do this little wall here, and it just works real well. It doesn't look real pretty on the ends, but we'll go back and trim all that up and make it look real nice. But this is just a real simple, this will make sure that the molds fit together really nicely. And so uh, there's different ways you can do it. You can look on the internet. There's tons of different ways. Um, and I do them differently sometimes. But this is a really good way because you're going to ensure a really good smooth fit. I don't, like, I don't like punching the holes like a lot of people will do. Because sometimes if you have thousands of little holes, it's hard for the mold to fit together completely. What I do on this first part, it's real simple. You just start... Make sure you're wearing black gloves too because this is going to get messy. But you want to make sure you just start adding it to it like this. And you want to push down. Okay, I'm not going to do what they call vacuum on this. That's where you put it in a vacuum chamber. I don't have a vacuum. I don't use a vacuum. I do a brush on. You can buy a vacuum and you can dump. You can actually do a box mold and pour it all at once. Um, I don't do that. I do a brush on mold for my, almost all my stuff. But you don't want air bubbles to get into, uh, to uh, ruin your mold. So you go into all the little crevices and you push and you poke it in there. And this is a slow little process. You don't rush. And you just keep working it. And you just keep on keeping on. It's pretty simple. We're going to do this the whole way. We're going to make sure we get all the coverage. And when we're done, I'll show you what we do. We're, we're actually going to blow the silicone with like an air compressor. And it will uh, ensure that all the air bubbles and all the little places are completely covered. So stick with me. And when you come back, you'll be completely good and covered. Okay, hey guys, we're back. We got our first layer on here. And if you'll take a look, we've really worked it into all the little beard and all the little crevices. I used my air compressor. I didn't do it on the video because it would just probably annoy you to hear the sound. But I used my air compressor and an air chuck. And I sprayed it real hard. I sprayed it all down to get all the crevices. You want to do that on the first layer. You're capturing all the detail on the first layer. You don't, you don't want to screw that up. So you really want to work hard on getting that captured. And in all the little crevices, you don't want any bubbles. You don't want any other issues like that on this mold. So, um, and if you'll notice at the bottom down here, I've got like a containment ring. That ring is to keep my product from spilling out all over the place, because it will, if you'll notice, it's puddling up. And you don't want it running out, and you can always, you scoop down from the bottom like this, and you add that product back to the top, or it'll be, a lot of it will be wasted material. And so I just kind of scoop it, and I add, and I just work over everything. And so what we'll do next on the next video is uh, we'll add another layer and it'll be a runny later too, just to make sure we got everything. Thanks guys. Hey guys, welcome back. We uh, have got our first coat of silicone rubber on Goliath. I went ahead, I didn't have time to do a multiple layers yesterday, so I just let it sit overnight, completely cure. And if you kind of notice, 
we've gone um, once you once you have done your first layer and you've got lots of drips and they're like these little drippy things that hang down you want to clip all those off because those will add some really strange weird markings on your on your mother mold they'll build up funky layers um, you don't want it real sloppy because when you do your mother mold later you're gonna have all these weird impressions and you'll have to line them up to get them right so always trim them up make them look good but we got our first uh, our first layer on and we're gonna put our second layer on um, and I went ahead and poured a batch and I've got it mixed up with our uh, catalyst and I'm gonna show you real quick I add between our silicone coats, you're gonna to wanna to use a dye of some kind. You don't have to, but it's pretty helpful. And so what we do, um, you can get this uh, silicone pigment for uh, silicone rubbers on you, you know, on uh, Amazon or any of those places like that. There are a lot of companies out there that have uh, smooth on, different companies will sell this kind of stuff. Um, and you just kinda of take a little scoop like that. It does not have to be much. If you look in there, it doesn't have to be much, and you just drop it in there. And it, even if it turns it a shade kind of green, uh, it's, it'll help you see. Um, it'll help you see where you need to coat, and you need to get an even coat. This second coat is really, really important uh, to get complete coverage. And you really, and this is where people get screwed up underneath the undercuts down in here this is where you need to make sure you get coverage places that you can't really see by looking up so a lot of times you'll need to sit down look under and look up and you really on the second coat you work real hard to cover everything perfect um, because from here on out after this coat we're going to start adding thick layers and if you leave things uncovered on the second coat you're gonna have holes and weird funky places in your mold, and you're gonna have, you're gonna to have to work hard to fix that later. And so I got this mixed up. We're just gonna add this exactly the same way. Um, it's it's no different than what it was last time. And I did a big batch here. And if I have some left over, I'll take my fixo, my thickening chemical, and I may add a little bit of thickener and maybe add it to a few places. But for the most part, on the second. This is one of the most critical stages for, for putting your silicone um, rubber on, is that you cover everything perfect. And I'll show you guys one more thing before we put that on there. I went ahead and I added, uh, I went ahead and poured my other arms, David's arms yesterday, poured those, and then I, and I went ahead and put a coat on there to get those going. And uh, you know, and let me say a quick word. Let me learn from my dumb mistakes. Come here. Let me show you something. So I like, I really like using, I really like using water-based clays when I do molds. But I got sick and I was behind for about a week. These water-based clays, they're tricky because if you have to leave it unsealed while your silicone's drying, well that presents a problem because this air drying clay will dry out. So you gotta fart with it all day long. You gotta spray it and keep it dry, keep it, keep it moist, because if not, it'll start pulling away. And it's a pain in the butt, but it's a cheap way to do it because you get a big old bag of uh, clay for nothing. Really and truly, <clears throat> and there are other alternatives. You can, you can use um, wax-based clays for this. I don't like using them because sometimes it messes the figure up, but this messes the figure up more when you're, fi when you're having to fight with it more than anything else. So guys, um, when you come back, when you come back, um, I'm gonna go ahead and have this added and we're, we'll have our second coat on everything and then we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how to do our thick coats and that's where we focus in on our thick undercuts. Thanks guys.